ਜੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਦ ਸੀਰੀਜ਼ ਔਨ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਸੀਰੀਜ਼ ਔਨ ਕ੍ਰੋਮੈਟੋਗ੍ਰਾਫੀ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਕਵਰਡ ਦ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਟੂ ਕ੍ਰੋਮੈਟੋਗ੍ਰਾਫੀ ਇਨ ਦ ਅਰਲੀਅਰ 5 ਲੈਕਚਰਸ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਨਾਟ ਸੀਨ ਥੈਟ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੀ ਦ ਪਲੇਲਿਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਚ ਦੋਸ 5 ਵੀਡੀਓਜ਼ ਔਨ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਟੂ ਕ੍ਰੋਮੈਟੋਗ੍ਰਾਫੀ ਫਰਮ ਥਿਸ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਗੈਸ ਕ੍ਰੋਮੈਟੋਗ੍ਰਾਫੀ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਔਨ ਗੈਸ ਕ੍ਰੋਮੈਟੋਗ੍ਰਾਫੀ ਐਂਡ in this we'll be covering the introduction part and the principles of gas chromatography now this is a typical gas chromatograph instrument where you have a carrier gas supply an injection port a column a detector and an integrator all this will be seen later on in this lecture we'll see the principles and the introduction and the principles let us see the introduction first now gas chromatography is a very very vital part of uh, analytical chemistry although it is not a sep- it is not an analytical method but gas chromatography is very 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 important for the separation of mixtures before analysis in analytical chemistry the analysis is done using some method but if you are having a mixture you cannot analyze unless you have the components of the mixture separated by some means gas chromatography is one of the most widely used instrument in uh, laboratories analytical laboratories uh, nowadays and uh, no no lab worth its name will not be having uh, a gas chromatograph this method is used to separate gaseous or volatile mixtures if you are having a gaseous mixture you can separate using gas chromatography or if you are having liquids liquid mixture but these liquid mixtures if you can volatile if you can uh, convert them into gaseous form or these mixtures are volatile mixtures then you can use gas chromatography to separate them now what is done is the sample vaporized sample or the gaseous sample is injected to the head of the column you have a column and in that column the sample is injected the elution or the separation is done with the help of inert mobile gas and uh, the gas which is there is not interacting with the components of the mixture but it it is used only to carry the uh, sample through the column the column there are two types of columns solid columns and liquid columns or two types of chromatography gsc and glc gsc involves the solid stationary phase in which the solid particles they are usually polar they are used to separate the components of the mixture whereas in glc you have a stationary support on which liquid is coated and this liquid interacts with the components of the mixture and the process of separation is by partition the method of separation is by partition between the solute components uh, so partition of the solute components between the mobile phase and the stationary phase gsc is not widely used uh, so glc uh, is the predominant method in gas chromatography and nowadays uh, glc Uh, is shortened to gc when you talk of gc it is understood that you are talking of glc actually it is not correct because in that case the gsc is sideline and not considered only but uh, the majority of the instrument they are glc instrument so glc is shorted shortened to gc uh, gsc applications are limited to uh, uh, applications are limited as uh, polar molecules tend to semi permanently stay on the column leading to tailing of the chromatographic peaks see the so- the solid used in gsc are usually polar and the separate the mixture which is to be separated is of polar gases these polar gases they tend to permanently or semi permanently stay on the column now because of this the uh, the chromatogram obtained shows a big tail and uh, the results are not reliable 
so gsc has got very limited applications only certain low molecular weight gases they are separated using gsc so henceforth we will consider only glc in our lectures because glc has got a wider application glc finds wider applications it is based on partition of analytes uh, it is partition of analytes not uh, the analysis partition of analytes between gaseous mobile phase and liquid uh, stationary phase the partition takes place between the stationary phase and the mobile phase this concept of glc was introduced by martin and singe in 1941 and uh, the development of the instruments took place in the early 1950s but the commercial instruments were available in 1955 however there were problems regarding the clogging of the columns and the patents so gc was not very much popular till the early 1980s by 1985 the patents had expired and the problem of clogging of the columns were somewhat resolved so after 1980s the gc became very glc became very popular and by 1985 there are there were over 2 lakh instruments instruments by the time now there must be millions and millions of instruments worldwide because gc is something which is uh, un uh, uh, gc is something which without which you cannot do anything in analytical chemistry nowadays now let's see the principles of gc in uh, this lecture the uh, whatever are the principles of chromatography and whatever are the equations of chromatography which we have covered in the earlier five lectures of introduction to chromatography they all apply to gc also all the van den tuyt equation and all other equations which are there they apply to uh, gc also with minor modifications now in your earlier lectures we have seen retention time but in the case of uh, gc there is one more term which is introduced which is called retention volume retention volume is nothing but the retention time multiplied by the flow rate if you are passing the mobile phase at a certain flow rate if you multiply by the flow rate the retention time you get retention volume so vr is equal to tr into f and vm is equal to tm into f vr is the retention volume for the solutes which you are solute which you are separating and vm is the retention volume of an unretained solute uh the temperatures and of operation in various labs will be different so vr values and vm values obtained will be different in various labs for standardization a term which is used is a specific retention volume this specific retention volumes can be used for comparison in various labs whatever uh, retention volume you obtain in one lab may be different from uh, from the values obtained in another lab but specific retention volume is corrected for the temperature of operation and it is corrected for the quantity of the mobile phase used and that specific retention volume will be same everywhere uh, across the world for a particular separation the specific retention volume vg is given by vr into 273 upon wl into tc right this tc is in the denominator right so you have 273 is uh, the factor which is used to use for correction to degree kelvin the temperature uh, which you are operating is tc and if you are operating at 27 degree celsius tc will be 300 degrees kelvin so here uh, tc will be 300 wl is the mass of the mobile phase which is used on the column right so this specific retention volume is the one which is reported in all the literature because it it is correcting the temperature difference in the uh, place from place to place and it also it's uh, considering the uh, mass of the mobile phase used if you are using lesser mobile phase uh, then the wl will be smaller if you are using more mobile phase the wl will be more but then the equation in the equation everything gets corrected and what you get is specific retention volume and that is for per gram of the 
of the stationary phase used. There's a mistake here. WL is the mass of the stationary phase on the column. It's not mobile phase. The relationship between uh, VG and K, that is the retention factor and the specific retention volume. The retention factor is related uh, to the specific retention volume. Specific retention volume is equal to 273 by TC multiplied by uh, K into rho S where rho is, is the rho s is the density of the stationary phase here 273 by ts is one term and you are multiplying this term by k into rho s right rho s is the density of the stationary phase so this is the relationship between a specific retention volume and k that is the retention factor so you can see that the specific retention volume is dependent on the temperature and the uh, retention factor and the density of the stationary phase. Another concept, another term which is important is the mobile phase velocity. Another factor which is important is the mobile phase velocity because mobile phase velocity changes the plate height of the column. Whatever is the Van Dimter's equation, it is fully applicable to GC. In Van Dimter's equation, the longitudinal diffusion term B by U is more important for GC because there is larger diffusion uh, because there are the diffusion rates in GC are much larger. If you uh, see the plot of H against uh, mobile phase velocity, you will find that the minimum minima obtained in the curve is much broader in GC as compared to LC. So here is a plot of H against the mobile phase velocity and uh, you find that the minimum minima obtained in the h value uh, is quite broad ranging from mobile phase velocity from approximately 15 to 40 cm per second so uh, you can operate under a various uh, flow rates uh, you have to choose a minimum minima value of uh, that is you have to choose a flow rate where you get the h value at the lowest because h value if it is lower the plate numbers will be higher and the plate number if it is higher the column will be efficient so this is all about the theory of uh, uh, chromatography and the introduction part we'll continue with the introduction uh, uh, with, we'll continue with the gas chromatography in the next lecture if you want to see the introduction to chromatography you can watch the videos in from the playlist which is there and the, the, we'll continue with the gas chromatography in the next lecture. Thank you.